Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Retro Gaming Landmarks with Josh Animus and Sean Kelly. This week, we're going to Fort Lauderdale, Florida to the Glitch Bar. The Glitch Bar experience can be defined as part local watering hole, part vintage arcade, and part late night party. Glitch Bar redefines nightlife and offers an alternative by infusing original classic arcade machines from the 80s and the 90s with modern mixology and an incredible selection of craft beer in a modern bar setting. To satisfy your thirst, Glitch Bar has a full bar, a 12-tap draft system, a vast array of bottled and canned craft beer, bottled and canned ciders, as well as a fine assortment of craft sodas, if that's your thing. Alongside the vintage arcade games, Glitch Bar also offers some more modern console games for the more technological challenges. Please join us as we take a look at this Glitch Arcade Bar. So my name is Neil Hernandez, I'm the arcade technician here at Glitch Bar. Welcome to my home, basically. <laughs> I'm here every day and I get to fix arcade machines every day, right? And I get to play them too, that's part of the job. So on your right, you have a Neo Geo 4 slot. Uh, we got games like Bust the Move, Metal Slug, Fatal Fury, um, Samurai Showdown. We had another one here, but uh, we sent it off to get um, an upgrade. This game here does not exist. This is a... This is a, like Polybius. This is like one of these weird games. I'm not gonna explain how to play it. You show up and you play it on your own terms. But it is addicting. You'll be playing it once or twice, three times. It's very fun. And once you get the hang of it, you'll know what you're doing. Maybe a little obsessive. Now, we, the name we came up with it is called The Ring. That's it, just The Ring. There's nothing else there. There's no other name. We came up with the ring. So everything else here, I installed it in the cabinet, and uh, everybody here likes it. We didn't even put instructions. We want to leave it creepy. <laughs> every play, every uh, every place like this has to have a turtles, right? Everybody's got to have turtles. Over here, this one, this one's my pride and joy. Uh, this is a Neo Geo Goldie. These are hard to come by, but this is a Neo Geo Goldie. It's a two slot, and uh, the reason it's called a Goldie. It was because of this little gold plaque here. Um, this was supposed to be black, but we sent it to get powder coated in uh, gold. So that's pretty cool. We have a Frogger, we have a Tetris, 1943, X-Men versus Street Fighter. This one was personally at my house and then I brought it over here. Um, Tekken 5, awesome game. Tekken's always been awesome. Killer Queen on your left, obviously you need uh, not one, but two cabinets to actually play the game efficiently. <laughs> so both of them actually talk to each other. A lot of you know that one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Switch is Killer Queen Black, the killer retro multiplayer title for the Nintendo Switch that I cannot get enough of. Little did I know that there is a standalone cabinet that holds five players on each side and offers some of the most incredible live action setting arcade gameplay. And it happens to be one of the most competitive games here locally in Fort Lauderdale at Glitch. You're hosting tournaments, things like that. What are you going to tell me about that nowadays? Uh, we, do a month, we do a weekly tournament every week to promote new players. Uh, it's a way to teach players how to play the game and see the aspects of the how tournaments are done. Uh, then I also do a monthly tournament where we do a buy-in tournament, we give out prizes to the top place team, um, and it's very, very competitive. People form teams and they practice. On your right you have Cosmotrons. Awesome vector game, it's like a, like a Vectrex of sorts, but it's four player. Very addicting, very fun. The next one is Armed and Gelatinous. It's uh, basically like a blob fighting game. You go collecting um, guns and missiles and lasers and you go killing the other blob. It's pretty fun. The next one over is Death Ball. It's like soccer but with ma like a magician type uh, esque thing to it. Very addicting game. Very fun too. Galactic Battleground is a Galaga of esque of sorts. It's another indie game. And it's a four-player Galaga. Very addicting, very fun. This game is always busy. If you are gonna be here to play this game, expect to wait a while for it. 
Black Emperor, this one's this one's uh, a good one. Black Emperor, you are a you are riding a motorcycle, and you have to stay on track on the road. Avoid the um, the barriers, and if you go through a sand pit, you gotta just keep repeatedly re rapidly hitting the button. This cabinet's actually a little different because this one actually has a fan right here built in it. So when you press and hold it, the fan is actually gonna activate and it blows air on you as you're playing it. So it gives you a, the feeling of uh, driving fast. It's pretty cool. So area 51 and maximum force, obviously we have to have a gun game here. Because who doesn't like shooting aliens, right? So we have, uh, we have alien, area 51 and uh, maximum force on this one, Arkanoid for anyone's addicted to Arkanoid. And this is the actual cabinet that uh, Bill did the perfect Pac-Man on, where he did the 3 million 360 score. And this is the cabinet, it will be here for another couple of days and it's gotta go back to the owner. He's been nice enough, Chris has been nice enough to um, lend it to us and uh, obviously he's gonna want his game back. <laughs> so over here on the wall, we have uh, two switches, Nintendo switches. Obviously we have Mario Kart Deluxe on one end, it's usually what happens and then this side's probably gonna have like Smash Brothers. And that's typically how we keep them separate. But it's always, these three TVs, one, two, and three, they're always packed with people. Over here, these cabinets are the um, Pletus and Phoenix. Um, Pletus uh, was made by uh, Centauri and so was Phoenix, that's why they look very similar. But these cabinets were actually made in Hialeah. And uh, luckily they stayed in great shape and luckily we have them here. And uh, we got a little bit of South Florida history here with these cabinets. But yeah, pretty cool. Oh, and a Space Invaders cocktail. The four player Pac-Man. So when you and your buds are drinking some beer, you could go ahead, go battling it out here. You don't have to go anywhere else and you duke it out with, between the four of you guys. This one's different than just any other Pac-Man. One, it's got multiplayer on it, but uh, it's all based on the, the food and the power pellets and you obviously increase in size and you gotta eat the other guy. Pretty cool. Very, very, very good job by Namco. That is an original Robotron all the way. And it sounds awesome. Let me see if I hear, hold this. Let me see if I can play a round of Robotron. Yeah, let's see this sweetness. A nice little multi-cab that's over here right next to you. So the multi-cab, this one out here, let me see if I can, yeah, you press and hold. There you go. So you press and hold player one, player two, and you can actually get the selections. You got Defender, Stargate, Rubitron, Joust, Bubbles, Splat, and Blaster. Defenders are what I usually play. All right, so switch and shoot. It's a very simple game. You have one button, and with this one button, you're going to change the trajectory of the ship and shoot at the same time. It doesn't make any sense, but it makes sense. See, very simple here. After a while, you get good at it, but here, let's see if I could get something going here. Oh, there got two bullets. There's your three bullets. This is, a, this is a nice one. I love this one. It makes it a little easier. Well, you see, I missed the, the power up, so now it demotes you. Ah, now I'm back to two. That's gonna get harder if I don't catch the next one. There's three buttons here. Probably going for a world record here at this pace. There you go. Ah, I missed it. If I would have grabbed it, it would have gone to the next sector. There you go. Ah, I hit the wall. So this is the old classic side, right? We, on this side, we put the classic side of a lot of the classic stuff. One being the gauntlet. This one is working 110%. A lot of people play it rigorously they show up to play it um, our silver strike bowling machine is down for the week but that's fine I'll get it up and running soon we have a Simpsons we have golden tea and this one's fun I remember this when I was a kid this one's off-road with the track pack so all three the the three sides work and and just uh, an awesome three-player game so there's an actual excite bike here let me see if I could get on this side so we have a real excite bike. Cool, right? Now here's the cool thing. If you uh, trip, if you actually trip and hurt the other guy, I think you do it like three or four times. The excite bike turns gold. 
and then you're able to just go faster as fast as humanly possible and not overheat. This is just, uh, that's why it's called Excite Bike, which is pretty cool. That is awesome. I know, right? And it's pretty cool. Uh, this is the Donkey Kong that Bill plays on. It's an original 1981, in, uh, you know, Nintendo Donkey Kong cabinet. Um, this is the one that he did the million fifty on. So he, when he did the million fifty, he did it on this bad boy. Over here, you have uh, the arcade millipede. It's another fun one. You have Miss Pac-Man. You have Galaga, and obviously the Red Bull Pac-Man um, arcade cabinet. Hey everybody, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching the newest episode of Retro Gaming Landmarks. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much again for watching. Have a good one.